Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to downgrade your iPad second gen or iPhone 4S from iOS 9 down to iOS 6. So as you can see here, this is an iPad second gen. It's running iOS 6.1.3. This process is pretty straightforward, and today I'm gonna to show you guys every single step that you need to follow in order to get this working. So first and foremost, let's run through what you need. You're gonna need an iPad second gen, and there is only one model this does not work for. It's gonna be EMC 2450. That iPad was sold later on, and it does not support this iOS 6 downgrade. Every other iPad second gen does support this. A really quick and dirty way to tell if your iPad is gonna support it is if you have a 32 or 64 gig iPad second gen. Every single one of those models supports it. It's just the 16 gig that may or may not work depending on the version number. That said, any iPhone 4S will work, whether it's an eight gigabyte, 64, 32, any model 4S will work. No other devices are supported for this. The iPad mini does not work, the iPad third gen, iPad fourth gen, iPhone 5, iPod Touch, none of those devices will work for this. Only the iPad second gen and the iPhone 4S. All right, what else do you need? Well, you're going to need a 30 pin to USB cable, just like this. Can be any model, any brand, as long as it's able to send data back and forth. The last thing you need is a Mac computer. I do not know if this works on Windows or Linux, but I do know that it does work on Mac OS. Now, this is a 2015 MacBook Pro. This one's running Mac OS Monterey. I believe this works on any model Mac computer from 2008 and newer. All right, let's get started. So here's my iPad second gen. This is running a fresh install of iOS 9. So I'll show you right there. We can get started. Here is our iOS 9 home screen. We'll head into settings, general, and about, and I'll show you guys what we're running here. This is on 9.3.5. If you're not on 9.3.5, you should update. The only reason not to update is if you're on iOS 4, 5, 6, or 7. Those versions are special enough. Don't upgrade if you're on those, but if you're on iOS 8 or a random version of iOS 9, then update to 9.3.5 like I have here. So first things first, get connected to Wi-Fi, and then we're gonna head into Safari. The first step here is gonna be to jailbreak iOS 9. So to do that, we're gonna go into Safari and we're gonna type legacy jailbreak into the search browser and then click go. It should be the second link here. It's the legacy website jailbreaks.app. Once we're in here, you're gonna click on install Phoenix. Once the pop-up shows up, you'll click install. Now, every now and then, the Phoenix installation does not work properly, so it'll install or it'll load, but then it will fail. I believe that's a server issue. If that happens to you, you may have to wait a few days or a couple weeks and then try again. Lucky for us, that server is currently working, so Phoenix is installed. But if we try to click on it, it's not going to open. That's because we have to go into settings, and inside the general tab, we'll scroll down and you see device management. Click on that. Click on this. Now this may say something different. This name does change from time to time, but we're gonna click on the blue trust link, then click on trust. And once that finishes, we can go back to find that Phoenix jailbreak application. Inside of here, we're gonna click on prepare for jailbreak, click on accept, click on dismiss, proceed with jailbreak, begin installation, and use provided offsets. Now this should jailbreak the iPad or iPhone, and if it does, we will get Cydia on the home screen. If it does not work, don't panic, just try it again, open up the Phoenix app and go through those steps that I just did until you find Cydia on the home screen. Sometimes this works instantly, other times it takes 10, 20 tries for it to work. So we'll see what happens here. The iPad should reboot regardless. Whether or not we find Cydia on the home screen will be the determining factor of how to proceed. All right, let's go ahead and slide to unlock. And we do have Cydia, but if for some reason you don't, you'll head back into Phoenix and follow those steps again. Once you get Cydia, you'll click on it and it should load and then eventually quit the application. This does take quite some time. Once the iPad either restarts or Cydia quits, click on it again until you're able to reach the menu. So once we're here, we'll click return to Cydia and we will do the complete upgrade. Sometimes this fails, sometimes it works. It's not 100% critical that you do this. If for some reason your iPad is just not able to do this upgrade, don't worry, I think we can still proceed with the next steps. 
Okay, once we're back in Cydia and you've completed that upgrade, or if you haven't, I think it'll still be okay. We're gonna go to the search tab and you're gonna type in open S. And you should see this one here, open SSH is gonna be this green one. Click on that and we are going to install this Cydia tweak. Once we've done that, we'll click return to Cydia and we're gonna add one more. So go back to search. This time type in core, C-U-R-E, and we should see core utilities right here. Click on that one and we're gonna install that as well. Okay, once that is done, we are finished with the iPad for the time being. Now we're gonna go onto our MacBook. You're gonna head into Safari and if you're running something older than Mac OS Catalina, you're gonna to wanna to use Chrome or Firefox for this. But what you want is you wanna type in legacy iOS kit. And it should be this first link here. It's gonna be a GitHub file that we want to download. Inside of here, we're gonna click on latest on the right side over here. And it should show us a bunch of options. The file we want is this here, legacy iOS kit Mac OS. The version number may be different depending on when you're watching this. We'll click on that and we're gonna go ahead and allow that to download. We can exit out of the web browser and now we're gonna open a terminal window. So you can either do terminal and spotlight or find it in your applications, but we want a blank terminal window open. Now we're gonna take that folder we just downloaded, drag it onto the desktop because we're gonna be using it quite frequently. Once on the desktop, double click to open and put these two windows side by side so that you can see and access both of them. What we wanna do is take this restore.sh file. This is essentially the only thing we're ever gonna use inside of the legacy iOS kit folder, but you do have to leave that inside of here. You are not supposed to drag it out, otherwise this will not work. Okay, so we're gonna drag that restore.sh into terminal. We're gonna click on the terminal window so that it is selected. You'll know it's selected because these three dots have color on them. And we're gonna click the return key. We're gonna click okay. And now we have to install Xcode. So you'll click on install for that and agree. If you're on battery, you will continue on battery power. If you're low, obviously plug in. Now, don't be alarmed. It's not going to take as much time as it shows here. I believe this will take anywhere from one to 20 minutes, depending on a few factors, such as how fast your computer is and how fast your network speed is. So once this finishes, we will be back. All right, once the software was installed, we can go ahead and connect our iPad or iPhone into the MacBook. Now I should point out, and I should have mentioned this earlier, if you have an Apple Silicon computer, you're probably gonna get some more warning messages when trying to install some of that information. These older Intel computers do not get as upset when trying to do some of these things. All right, once you're plugged in with the iPad, you're gonna to wanna to click trust so that they can communicate. And then we're gonna put the iPad somewhere for you guys to see. All right, so, now what we wanna do is once again, we're gonna drag the restore.sh file into terminal. And actually, I think we skipped a step. Over here in terminal, it's asking us for a password. So we're gonna click the return key. And okay, so we are done. All right, now we're gonna restore.sh back over here. And we'll click enter. And it should find our iPad or iPhone plugged in. And it did. So let me go ahead and zoom in here for you guys. So you can see we have a bunch of options and if you've never used legacy iOS kit, this looks pretty overwhelming. But essentially what this is telling us is each one of these numbers is what we would type in if we want this action to happen. So it's a pretty powerful software. There's a bunch of cool things to do. If you ever get bored, play around with it. There's a lot of cool stuff here. But what we want is the restore slash downgrade tab. So we're gonna type the number one and click enter. It's gonna ask us what version of iOS do we want? We want iOS 6.1.3. If for some reason you wanted 8.4.1, you would type the number one, but for us, we want 6.1.3. So we're gonna type the number two and click enter. Now we're gonna type two again to download that IPSW from Apple servers. So type the number two and click enter. Depending on your network speed, this could take anywhere from 30 seconds to 20 minutes. You can see the progress right here. This is the total amount of megabytes the file is. This is how many your computer has downloaded and that's a percentage. 
So just sit here and let it download. And once it finishes, we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, once it's done, we can go ahead and type the number three because we're ready to start restore. So type the number three and click return. Now it's asking us, do we want the iPad to be jailbroken? We're gonna say yes to that because it's just a super easy way to get that jailbreak. So we'll type the letter Y and click return. Now it's asking if our computer has more than eight gigs of RAM. If it does, type Y. If it doesn't, type N. Now the computer is working on that IPSW file, but we are not quite done yet. There should be another prompt coming up here in just a minute. I'll go ahead and speed through this part of the video. All right, now it's telling us to install those things that we already installed through Cydia earlier, and it's kind of hidden in all of this text. It's telling us to install OpenSSH, we already did that, and Core Utilities, we already did that as well. Now, I'm gonna basically just tell you what you need to do here. You can read this if you want, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the Enter key, and we're gonna type the word Alpine. So that's gonna be A-L-P-I-N-E. E. I'll put that on the screen for you. It's not going to show up as you type it, so just type each letter one by one, make sure you get it correct, and then click the return key. Now the computer is actually going to begin the process of restoring. So we can go ahead and zoom out here, and you can see the progress over here on the left, and you can see the iPad over here on the right. Now one last step is going to be to unplug the iPad and reconnect it. So you're going to disconnect it from the computer down here and then plug it in again. You have to be pretty quick with this. You can see that the software gives you five attempts and it's gone now. But essentially, you got to keep an eye on that window and make sure that once it tells you to disconnect and reconnect the iPad, you do so within like 10 seconds. Otherwise, it's going to fail and you're going to have to run through all those steps again. So don't panic, but just be timely with it. And as you can see over here, we do have the old iOS 6 Apple logo on the screen here, as well as the progress bar. That is how we know that this has been successful and that the iPad is installing iOS 6. So we'll set that over here. And this process should take anywhere from like five to 10 minutes, depending again on the speed of your computer. And once it finishes, we'll be back to go through the iOS 6 setup screen and show you guys that it did in fact work. All right, the downgrade has finished. You can see we've got iOS 6 here. So we are now completely done with everything. We can disconnect the iPad and I'll just quickly go through the setup screen here so you guys can see that this is iOS 6. Now keep in mind, this is a completely untethered downgrade. So that means you can turn the iPad off, you can turn it back on, you can erase all content and settings through the uh, settings application. Whatever you want, this thing will continue to be on iOS 6, no questions asked. This is completely untethered. And as we fly through the setup screen here, you can go ahead and get that nostalgia. So here we are, this is a true downgrade and we do have Cydia because we did select to install or jailbreak the device a while back on the application legacy iOS kit, which is super great. Huge thanks to everyone who contributed to that project. It has made super cool things like this iOS 6 downgrade possible. All right, so that is basically it. That's been a quick guide on how to downgrade your iPad second gen or your iPhone 4S from iOS 9 all the way down to iOS 6. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you run into any problems or you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Myself or any of the great members of our community will do their best to answer them and help you out. Once again, this only supports the iPad second gen and it does not support EMC number 2450 and it does support every model iPhone 4S. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.